Welcome back to the Gentleman's Gazette. In today's video, as part of our ongoing Is It Worth It series, we're going to take a look at Levi's jeans, and in particular, the popular 501 model, and whether or not it's worth it. Now, Levi's has long been recognized as the iconic American jean, starting out life as a heavy duty workwear item and soon becoming a stylish and iconic fashion piece. Levi's jeans are known and recognized all over the world. In this video, we'll take a look at their history, the modern day construction, and whether they're worth it. Levi's has a lot of different style models available, but for the purpose of this video, we decided to take a look at the classic 501 original fit model. Now let's take a look at where Levi's began. The company was founded in May of 1853 when German Jewish immigrant Levi Strauss moved from New York to San Francisco to open up the West Coast branch of his brother's dry goods and clothing business. And to this day, the headquarters for the Levi's brand is still based in San Francisco. In particular, Levi Strauss Plaza, or Levi's Plaza, as it is more popularly known since 1981. And when the company started, it was selling dry goods and wholesale items. A Latvian Jewish immigrant named Jacob Davis would purchase bolts of denim fabric from the wholesale department of this business. He noticed that customers were purchasing quantities of excess denim to repair parts of their clothes. This gave him the idea to use copper rivets to reinforce the stress points of the clothing, areas such as pocket corners and the base of the trouser fly. The problem was Jacob Davis didn't have enough money to purchase the patent for the design. Therefore, it was proposed that he and Levi Strauss go into business together. Levi accepted the offer, and in 1873, the patent was granted, and the pair began making their denim overalls. Now, the first pair of Levi's 501 jeans were manufactured in 1890. Unfortunately, the company records before 1906 were lost, so not even Levi's knows the origin of the 501 number, but we do know that it simply ties into the original riveted jeans. Levi Strauss passed away in 1902 at the age of 73, but the company was taken over by his nephews. Descendants of the Strauss family run this business to this day. Until the 1920s and 30s, the jeans were very much viewed as workwear. With the denim fabric being much tougher and more resilient than what's being offered today, it was seen as an ideal thing to wear in harsh work conditions. Indeed, it was the hard-wearing nature of the jeans which saw an increase in popularity among the general public. People would return from vacations with tales of their own hard-wearing jeans. The jeans were also popular among the Second World War and listed as an essential commodity. This also saw a change in design to the 501 model, where a rivet at the base of the fly and a cinched part of the waist at the back of the jean were removed to conserve materials. Now, these features have since remained vacant on the 501 model. Now, of course, we can't talk about jeans without talking about the 1953 film, The Wild One, or the 1955 film, Rebel Without a Cause. In these films, Marlon Brando and James Dean, respectively, wear jeans in their roles. Now, this signifies the change in society with the creation of subcultures with greasers, mods, and rockers. Appealing to the younger post-war generation, jeans were being seen as a rebellious departure from style from what their parents and grandparents were wearing. Jeans had made their mark in history as much more than just workwear. Levi's capitalized on the move toward a much more casual style in the 1960s and 70s when the blue jeans craze was born. The company did face some financial troubles in the 1980s and 90s due to competition from other jean brands such as Dockers, Lees, and Wranglers. That being said, the company has remained more or less profitable until the present day, with the 501 model remaining one of the most popular items they sell. The brand's lineup has gone on to expand to include women's wear, children's, a full range of casual items to go along with its denim collection. Now that we've taken a look at the history of Levi's, let's take a look at the modern day 501 jeans. Now it's worth mentioning that there are over 40 different style options available under the 501 model on the Levi's website. Not only that, but the 501 style might be finished in different fabrics or have different details. Now, if that wasn't confusing enough, some styles aren't the same all over the world, and some are area-specific. Now, we decided to go with the most classic pair we could find. So for this video, we're looking at the 501 Original Fit Rent in Dark Wash. Or if you're in Europe, the style might be called One Wash. And now let's go ahead and look at some of the styling details. We chose these jeans because they are a classic mid-blue color with the tan stitching. Kind of the quintessential jean, if you will. Now they feature the Levi's red tag on the left hand side of the right back pocket. Now there are two back pockets, two front pockets at the hip, and the right pocket also has the traditional smaller pocket right below the waistband. 
Now, fun fact, this pocket was actually designed to carry a man's pocket watch while he was at work. There's also a leather looking patch on the back of the waistband above the right back pocket, which has a vintage styling and a light tan beige color. The company's wording and logo appear here in red. This is similar to what was shown on the older styles of their workwear jeans. Characteristic of the 501 model, the jeans are finished with a button fly. The buttons and rivets at the stress points are made up of a copper colored alloy, but we couldn't find much information on their website to really tell us what metal this was. Now, although the original rivets were made of copper, we doubt that that's the case today. Copper has a chemical reaction with moisture, and this could have a discoloring effect on the jeans. Now, with the different finishes available within the 501 style, it's easy to see how there's a difference in fabrication that is used, and how in recent years, the 501 has been more about focusing on fit rather than staying true to the original 501 model. Now the finish we've chosen is made of 100% cotton denim, which is machine washable. Although the Levi's website does state that you should wash your jeans sparingly, at most once every 10 years. Sounds gross. Can't do it. Naturally, this will help prolong the life of your jeans, as each wash will break down the fibers and also increase the fading on the jeans. Now, it's important to note that these jeans are not made from a salvage denim. Salvage denim, particularly from Japan or Turkey, is considered of the highest quality among manufactured jeans. Now, this is where you can see the edge of the bolt of fabric that the jeans were made from on the outseam of the jeans. Now, although salvage denim is of the highest quality, it's also very expensive and needs to be made on vintage looms. The Levi's materials and manufacturing all take place in places like Sri Lanka, Vietnam, and Indonesia to save on production costs. The denim in these jeans are not of the same high quality of salvage, but they are a good, strong, and sturdy cotton, which have a great color to them. Now, a benefit is that these jeans will not have as long of a break-in period as salvage jeans would, so they can be more comfortable in a shorter time span. And now let's take a little bit of a look at the fit of the 501 model. The 501s are a straight fit jean. They sit just above the hip with a medium rise and no tapering in the leg. And I was quite surprised by the medium rise on these jeans. Given that this is the original model of the 501, I expected it just a little bit higher on the waistband. Now it's worth mentioning that there are several different versions of the 501 model within the Levi's vintage clothing lineup. However, the style that we're going to be reviewing today are the readily available 501 model from the standard collection. It's not an uncomfortable fit by any means, and I can certainly understand the move toward a lower rise in the waistband given the trend for things to be a little bit more casual in recent years. Now it's easy to see how medium rise can be considered a higher rise in today's market with so many jeans and trousers being made available with such low rises. That being said, I was impressed to find a full range of sizes being made available in single increments so that you can find the perfect size for your waist. I found that by going about an inch less than my normal trouser size, I was able to get a great fit straight away. The straight fit against the leg is preferable for a much more classic wardrobe and will work with a number of items in a classic wardrobe as well. Now please check out our video here if you want to understand more about how to find the right jeans for your body type. And now the big question, is it worth it? Now we've already touched on some of the confusion around some of the different fit differences within the 501 range, right? Well get ready, things get even more confusing when it comes to the price. Now Levi seems to base much of their pricing based on location. Now for example, the pair of 501 jeans that we're looking at today can be found for $59.50 if you're in North America or 75 pounds if you're in the United Kingdom. Now, even with a fluctuating exchange rate, that's still quite the difference in price. Now, of course, Levi's can be found in department stores, outlet stores, and can be a staple when vintage shopping. But in determining their worth, we decided to go straight to Levi's to find a brand new pair. Now, the in-store experience was actually quite good for us. The assistant we spoke to was knowledgeable, not too pushy, which made for a great experience. Now it's worth noting that the service was above what we expected for a company that's so large and has over 500 stores across the world, and that not everyone's experience might be the same. Now the service was really useful to us, and after shopping around on the Levi's website, it was great to get some assistance in looking for the exact style that we wanted. Now this is because the website in itself can be a little bit confusing, and with such a large range of products and so many different styles and finishes within those products, we found it quite confusing to find the exact thing that we were looking for. Now although the online store has some detailed images about the products that you're looking at, it would have been great to see some more information about the metals found in the buttons and the rivets, and maybe some images showcasing how the jeans might 
might fade over time as things are going to be unique to your in particular jeans and they're supposed to get better with age and look unique to what you're wearing. Felt loaded. Um. Now, all that being said, the 501 jeans that we purchased are a great pair of jeans. They are classic style that epitomize blue jeans, and it's easy to see how Levi's is so popular all over the world. So, are the Levi's 501 jeans worth it? Well, on average, yes, we think that they're worth it. Naturally, as the price of Levi's jeans can fluctuate from different locations, it can be easy to assume that it might be more worth it if you purchase in one location than the next. Now, of course, we're not advocating that you need to go travel across the planet just to buy a pair of jeans. Now, our point is that the price difference across locations is something to consider. But on balance, with the pair of jeans that we've reviewed today coming in under $100 or 100 pounds, the overall make, quality, and material is something that I would expect at this price point. But the 501s might not work as well for someone who cares more about the current trends and the latest fashions. As the overall style of the Levi's 501 model hasn't changed much over the years, it can be seen as more of a deal breaker. These jeans are meant to be timeless, not fleeting. And with that in mind, the Levi's 501 model will work wonderfully with somebody who has a more classic style and fit. Now, the fit of the modern 501s are surprisingly versatile for a wide range of body types. Now, if you're a regular viewer of Gentleman's Gazette, we can imagine that these are going to be the ideal jeans for you to include in your wardrobe. As the straight fit, the deep blue color will be an ideal thing that will work well with a lot of things in your wardrobe. Perhaps even a piece of soft casual tailoring. Today I'm wearing a green field jacket and a blue and white buttoned up casual shirt with the dark rinse Levi 501 jeans. And then I'm pairing that with a pair of weathered brown Iron Ranger boots I picked up from Red Wing. that could look right to the bottom of you. We might have welcomed him except for one thing. His pants. They weren't dull like ours, and this troubled us. Stranger, how is it your pants have colors and flared legs? He just smiled and said, I'm wearing Levi's. Dull has gone out of style. Then in his strange way, he transported us to a world of Levi's slacks and jeans, tweeds, cords, flames with Dacron polyester. It was magic. Push jeans, blue jeans, bells, beautiful Levi's magic coveralls, knickers, and mitts. And we cried for more. No, I must go to other towns, he said, and he left. Left us with our new Levi's. Yes, we'll miss that stranger. But you know, life will never be dull in our town again. By the way, how are things in your town? Good morning, world. Good morning to you. Well, I'm wearing my Levi's. 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 Ha ha. Levi's. 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 Levi's.